less than 24 hours away now from potentially yeah. being cut off. What is your plan? <laughs> I really don't have one because, I mean, like I said, I don't have any family to go stay with. In less than 10 hours, hundreds of residents living at two Southside apartment complexes will lose their access to running water because of unpaid bills. Good evening to you at 11 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Nicole Griffin. Those bills were supposed to be paid by management of Berkeley Commons and Capitol Place Apartments. WRTV's Rachel Wilkerson checked in with residents who are now counting down the minutes until shutoff, and they're unsure of what will happen next. Citizens Energy says shutting off residents water isn't something they want to do, but are forced to because of high unpaid bills. Residents say it's unfair and shouldn't be happening. We're being punished for something that we had no control over and potentially our kids being removed. Residents of Berkeley Commons and Capitol Place Apartments are worried about what's going to happen if their water is shut off. The concerns with this is that I have five kids. We're not going to have any running water. They have to have working utilities, water, electricity, all of it. So what's going to happen to all of the families in here with kids and DCS, you know, comes in here. We don't have running water. I mean, can they pull our kids away from us for that? I mean, we don't know. Citizens Energy says the amount owed by both properties is, quote, just too large. It's been in communication with the management company, JPC, but a payment agreement wasn't reached. Citizens Energy says it will begin shutting water off Thursday around 9 a.m. Gas will also be shut off at Capitol Place. It's horrible. Now we're going to have to find somewhere else to stay. Brenda Jones has been living at Berkeley Commons with her son for four years. See, here's my water bill for uh, February, the one I just paid this month. She's frustrated her family is put in this situation when she has receipts showing she's paid her rent, water, and gas on time. It makes me feel mad because everybody in here pays our rent. We pay $50 a month in water, and then we pay our gas bill to the office, and they're supposed to pay the citizens energy. Disconnect notices were placed on residents' doors Thursday. This one is the water, this one is the gas. Since then, Ashley Kelly says residents haven't been able to get answers. Nobody wants to tell us anything, and I think that's the thing that is most frustrating. Today, we reached out to management at Berkeley Commons. Uh, I'm uh, you guys are actually supposed to be over on city property, not on ours. Goodbye. Okay, but I have a question for you. The door was shut in our face. We also went to the leasing office at Capitol Place Apartments. It was closed, although the hours say 9 to 6. What plan do you have right now? Just wait and see. Hopefully they make a, a payment arrangement. My next recourse will be call the health department, so call the attorney actually. general. The Marion County Public Health Department says if the water is shut off, it will cite the property owner for an emergency violation and the owner will have 24 hours to restore the water service or the department will take legal action. Working for you, I'm Rachel Wilkerson, WRTV. New information about the death of a man in IMPD custody. The man's family today released the autopsy report from the Marion County coroner that ru ruled Herman Whitfield III's death a homicide, but still to be determined, was it intentional? WRTV's Rachel Wilkerson has been digging into this report and joins us now with the detailed findings in this. Rachel. Now, Mark, the autopsy results show the cause of Whitfield's death is cardiac arrest while being subdued by law enforcement, prone restraint, and electrical weapon use. His weight and hypertensive heart disease are listed as other contributing conditions. This didn't have to happen. Herman Whitfield III's family is calling on the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department and Marion County Prosecutor's Office to hold the six officers involved in Whitfield's arrest accountable for his death. He was a wonderful son to them. He was undergoing some kind of psychosis and he needed some intervention, some help. Um, and they called and asked for help and they regret ever calling the police. Um, it, they're just devastated. After weeks of pressing for body camera footage, the department released edited video last month showing the encounter between officers in Whitfield at his home around 3 a.m. on April 25th. The footage captures officers tasing Whitfield twice, handcuffing him and applying pressure as he lies face down on the floor. The family says Whitfield gasped, saying, I can't breathe multiple times. Yeah,
You can hear Herman say that clearly three times at least, and maybe a fourth time uh, before he goes silent and before he doesn't move at all. Um, so I, the officers were right there. They should have heard that. They should have got him up right away. Whitfield's autopsy shows the position he was lying in while overweight and handcuffed played a role in his death. In June, Whitfield's parents and their lawyers filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Indianapolis and the officers involved claiming they violated IMPD's policy aimed at the way people are positioned while handcuffed. Today, Chief Randall Taylor ordered the department's critical incident response team to finish its criminal investigation into the officer's actions and present the case to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office by the end of Friday. The prosecutor's office will determine if criminal charges should be filed against any of the officers involved in Whitfield's arrest. A copy of the investigative file will also be provided to the FBI's Indianapolis field office. A separate investigation is being conducted by IMPD Internal Affairs. This week, Rachel Wilkerson has shown us the waiting list for the Indianapolis Housing Authority has 8,000 people. On average, those waiting for help are waiting for three to five years. Rachel has also pointed out there are at least 1,500 hundred people experiencing homelessness waiting for housing. She joins us live in studio now and Rachel Anderson is one of a community facing this kind of challenge now. It is Mark and Nicole. Dozens of people who live in Anderson tell me they're desperately trying to find a place to live but can't. The Anderson Housing Authority says there just isn't enough affordable housing to keep up with demand. We have approximately 100 people on the streets right now looking for a place to live. Finding an affordable home in Anderson isn't easy for many. Chief Executive Officer for the Housing Authority, Kimberly Townsend, says rising rent costs and lack of availability is leading to more people being homeless, even if they're on Section 8. The housing's ridiculous, the price of it right now. It's hard um, with even getting anybody to get back to you. Single mother of two, Samantha Bennett, is just one of hundreds facing this problem. Little guy. It's his buddy, for sure. She says she's been searching since November of 2021 for a place her children can finally call home. It's been a while now. Me and the kids have been back and forth um, between my really good friend's house and my mom's. And it's definitely been rough. Yolanda Wilkes is on disability. She says her fixed income has made her housing hunt nearly impossible. She too is staying with family and friends. I've looked at over at least 120 uh, application fees with money. Altogether, I probably spent about close to 800. For 2021 through 2022, the Anderson Housing Authority received around $8 million for nearly 1,400 housing vouchers, which is money that will help towards rent. The waiting list opened in August of 2021. Townsend says it was full within two hours. As of today, around 500 people are still waiting for the agency's help. We are full. Our properties are full right now. I'm very proud of it, but I also know that we need more. We need more help, more participation. Townsend says a lack of landlords accepting Section 8 is playing a major role in Anderson's housing crisis. That crisis, she says, is also causing people to lose their assistance from the housing agency. Here's why. Per federal regulations, the Housing Authority says it can only allow up to 120 days for a person to find a suitable home once it's been approved for Section 8. If a place isn't found, the voucher is taken away. Once you lose your voucher, you have to wait for the waiting list to open back up and reapply, a process that can take years. It's a dire situation Christina Schote is in. You told me I had 30 days to find a place or I lose my HUD. And so now there's no houses in Anderson, so now I lose my HUD and will be homeless at the same time. How hard have you been looking? Uh, every day. The Anderson Housing Authority and people who need an affordable place to live in Anderson just want landlords to step up and open their doors to those who may otherwise go without. Something needs to be done in Anderson. Anderson Housing Authority says it plans to reopen its Section 8 waiting list within the next 60 days. Nicole. City attorney argues releasing the full unedited body camera footage is premature. He says it's unfair to the officers. The Whitfield family attorneys argue since part of the video was released, all of it should be. 
that cat's already out of the bag. If they release their own version of the videos, they can't keep the unedited version of the videos away from the public. This edited body camera footage released on June 28th from the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department sparked controversy. It shows part of what happened on April 25th when Herman Whitfield III died in police custody. The Marion County Coroner's Office rules his death as a homicide. It's been terrible. I, I haven't been able to sleep too much. Uh, it's just had a terrible effect on me and my wife and the whole family in general. It's, it's a horror story. It really is. His parents are struggling to find comfort. They called 911 for help, claiming Whitfield was suffering from a mental health crisis. At some point during the officer's encounter, Metro Police claim Whitfield charged at an officer before being tased. Since his death, the family has been fighting for the release of the unedited video. How often does something like this happen in terms of not releasing the body camera, the full body camera footage? I think it's rare. I think it's rare that they would do that. Um, Perhaps they have something to hide, I, I don't know. No officers have been criminally charged. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office is still investigating the case. That's why the city attorney argues the full video should not be released to the public until the investigation is complete. He also argues the release could taint a grand jury if one is selected. He declined an interview. They're asking for more time, but my son only had nine and a half minutes. So I think they've had a lot more time than my son, Herman Whitfield III, had. And according to the Constitution, all of his rights, our rights, was kicked to the curb. Whitfield's family says eight months is long enough. They want transparency and are hoping the civil rights lawsuit will help bring them closure. If the truth, if the unedited video is showing what occurred and what occurred was abuse, brutality, excessive use of force, violation of policy, then that's what it is. In Indianapolis, Rachel Wilkerson, WRTV.